What's up YouTube, it's me Chris and I've got another great video for you. Um, I've been looking around at a couple of controller options because I just wanted to see what else was out there as I'm a controller guy. Um, I've been very loyal to the PlayStation 4 controller and I think that it's a great controller, but I also wanted to see what other options were available. And I found this guy. This is the Hori Pad from Hori and it looks like it might be the controller that I've been waiting for. So without further ado, let's unbox it and take a further look. I got so on the outside here, it does say Hori. Let me hold it up right. This is the Hori pad. You've got some Japanese writing on it. This is a PS3 and a PS4 controller. You can see on the bottom that you have Hori as well. More writing. The controller's in sideways. And right away you can see that it does have something that a lot of second party uh, controllers don't have, and that's a touchpad. Uh, you can see it does have the Xbox setup. We'll get more into that as we get the controller out of the box. And it has a few other tricks up its sleeve. Um, I was able to pick this guy up from Amazon, and I will link it in the description if you're interested in picking one up. But I just wanted to unbox it, give you guys my initial opinion, and see if this controller can truly replace my current uh, PS4 DualShock 4 controller. Um, I started looking at this just kind of randomly. Um, I've always been into Hori fight pads because I do like fighting games. I will be copying that new Street Fighter when it comes out. So I knew of the company because of their fighting pads and the quality that they had, but I didn't know what else they had to offer. And this controller is supposed to be like the bee's knees <laughs> for FPS games. And right off the bat, I can tell you that it's got a less than premium feel. I will say that it's very light, which may be bad, may be good, but I do like where it fits in my hands. Um, I've always thought the PS4 controller was a bit small, and that was, you know, somewhat of a knock if you want to call it a knock. But um, I did like the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One controllers a little better. And I've gone on record and said that. And I really like the way this one feels. It feels more like that. I do like the offset uh, analogs here. So really nice, uh, pretty responsive. Up top, one of the things that you'll see here is that your L2 and your R2 buttons are not actual triggers, they're more buttons. So you shouldn't have to do any kind of trigger mods here. It should just work right out of the box and give you a little bit faster response time there because the throw, the travel from going from here to here is a lot shorter. It's more like here to here, if that makes sense. So about halfway. So it should be a lot shorter. Um, the shoulder buttons are a little weird, I think. I have to play with them and tell you guys what I think. But overall, I think that definitely workable. Um, I'm wanting to mash them on the edges. I don't know how responsive that'll be. The actual face buttons look just a tad bit larger. Your normal triangle, circle, square, and X. Um, I really, really, really like the analogs. <laughs> um, they are recessed, but I like how they feel as you're pushing them in. They seem solid, and the touchpad seems pretty solid. One thing about it, it doesn't have quite the amount of texture that the original one does, but it feels about the same and you retain your option and your share buttons here, which is really nice, and your PlayStation button. The D-pad is what it is, standard D-pad. Uh, and on the bottom, we've got a couple other buttons here. One of these is to assign different buttons to do the same thing, so you can go in and assign different buttons. So if I wanted the square, for instance, to be X, I could go in and, and remap that button. That's what this one is for. And this button is really cool because it gives you three variable speed settings for your aiming. On the back of the controller, there's a button right here, which is called a target button, as you can see. And what you do with that is, say you're running your look adjustments really high on Call of Duty, and you've got it jacked way up, say eight, nine, 10, and you're moving all around really fast. Once you lock on the target, you can push the target button and it's supposed to slow it down so you can take the shot. So this ideally might be the best controller out there for FPS games. We'll just have to wait and see. If this works, that's gonna be really, really interesting. And you have three different modes here. You have a one, a two, and a three. Um, the other thing here on the bottom for this assignability, oh, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. This is the actual assignment button and that's a turbo button. The assignment button allows you to remap any buttons. This button on the bottom allows you to switch between PS3 and PS4. So you just switch it over for PS3, switch it back over for PS4. That's what that button does. Everything else is the way I described it. 
So yeah, uh, you get a, a really long cord here. This is a wired controller, so you shouldn't experience any input lag. We'll find that out. We'll hook up the old Elgato and record a little Call of Duty gameplay and see how well we do with it. But just first impressions and the way that it feels, I really, really like this controller. And um, even though it feels light, and sometimes light can be misconstrued as being cheap, it feels good, it feels solid. I won't be throwing it up against the wall or anything, I don't do that with any of my controllers, but I think this is gonna be really cool and I'm gonna be excited uh, to game with it. The only other thing that I need to do is figure out where, uh, which control freaks, because I do like to wear control freaks on my controllers, uh, I can use with this, but who knows, I may use this one without any control freaks. Um, the travel on the analogs is also really good. I'm just gonna compare the two. I've got my Black Ops controller here and it feels quite a bit more substantial in my hands, especially since this one does still have the rumble packs in it. Um, but yeah, I like, I, ain't, I mean, Hori did a bang up job with these analogs. These feel so much better than the ones that are in the PS4. Um, I do like, I like the D-pad better here as well. I mean, the only thing that I will say I like I don't know guys, I mean, I'm feeling them side by side now. Uh, I like the, the touch pad about the same too. I like like the face buttons better. Damn, I, I, I may like the way this one feels a little bit better overall, not gonna lie, with one exception, and that's L1 and R1. I do like the PlayStation version better here. I think that's a better because they're smaller buttons. Um, and I definitely like the L2 and R2 on this controller better. So yeah, minus the L1 and the R1, I think that I like the Hori Pad a little bit better than I do the actual PS4 controller. So enough of that, let me just show you guys how I play with it. I'm gonna go ahead and upload footage of my very first game with this controller. I'm gonna go ahead and record it with my Elgato and let you guys kinda see it and judge for yourself um, how you think I've played with it and if it's, you know, a worthy option for me. Capture the objective. Securing A. Alpha locked down. Enemy took Charlie. Securing Bravo. Alpha. Securing C. Enemy took Alpha. C locked down. Losing Bravo. Losing Bravo.
hostile HCXD in your AO. All right, guys, so you just had the opportunity to see me play a little bit with this controller, and I really liked it. A couple of things that really stood out was how comfortable it was, how light it is. Um, I thought that might be a weakness when I first unboxed it, but in fact, it is a strength. It feels really good in the hands. It's nice and sturdy, and I absolutely love these analog sticks. Uh, everything works exactly as it should work, being that it's a PS4 controller. Touchpad, everything works, so I didn't lose anything there. It does take a little bit of getting used to, uh, especially since you, if you've been playing PS4 for uh, a long time, having your directional pad here instead of having the other analog there, but you adjust pretty quickly and I didn't have any major issues. My standout favorite feature though has to be this targeting button on the back. This thing is amazing. I mean, I could just lock on to a target and have my sensitivity up way high, lock on, get my shot, and then go on about my business. And I really, really enjoy that, especially for FPS gaming. Um, this right now is my controller to beat. I will be moving away at least short term from my standard PS4 controllers, and I'll be gaming with the Hori Pro. This, ga this, this game pad is awesome. I can't say enough about how awesome that it is. And I haven't even messed around with assigning any new buttons or going in and doing any turbo mode with it. Um, as it stands right now, um, there's three levels of adjustment to the, the targeting system. I'm on the middle because I always think, you know, middle of the road is pretty good. So it's not too fast, not too slow. But what it allows me to do is even on Black Ops 3 at say a 9 or a 10, um, very high setting, I can hold that button down and be running around and lock right in and get a long range headshot with no optics. And that to me is pretty impressive. And I, I'm just, wow. Really like this controller. Uh, I'm a controller guy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If I had to give this one a score initially, it'd be a 9.5 out of 10. Absolutely in love with it. I'm gonna beat it up, run it through its paces. And for the price, I mean, I just don't think you can beat it. Hurry out did themselves. The only thing, and I mean the only thing that I might change would be these two bumpers. I think they're a little sharp on both edges and I wish they were just a tad bit rounder. This is great. Really happy, definitely recommend it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And until next time, I'll see you. I'm out of here.